ideas, new ideas, are the lifeblood of an industrial nation. Without them, progress soon grinds to a halt. All over the country, there are people thinking out new ways of doing things and trying out their ideas with models to see how far they'll work in practice. But what sort of encouragement do inventors get in Britain today? Britain is certainly not short of new ideas. Over the last 10 years, applications for patent rights of inventions submitted to the London Patent Office have almost doubled. Last year, nearly 34,000 new ideas were registered. That's fine, but what happens to all these bright ideas? With a £25 million government loan to develop new inventions for industry, the National Research Development Corporation examines about 500 every year. About 50 of these are taken up and financed. The corporation's most spectacular success is the hovercraft, in which it invested two and a half million pounds. Other aspects of the hover principle, including monorail trains, are now being studied by Britain's hovercraft industry. Geoffrey Stockdale is a 46 years old Liverpool ship designer with a background of seagoing engineering experience. Six years ago, a routine designing problem set him thinking about designing a ship like a horse and cart, so that the driving part of the ship could be detached from the cargo carrying part. The driving part of a ship, engines, crew, navigation equipment, accounts for two thirds of the ship's cost. And yet when in port, loading or unloading cargo, this costly part of a ship is idle. So Mr. Stockdale's new multi-packet ship can pick up and drop off its cargo carrying sections with a minimum of delay, ideal for a busy shuttle service. Each section of the ship has hinged fittings at deck level and these are joined hydraulically. It's estimated that a section could be detached in under 30 minutes. Not one British ship owner was interested in this idea. But now, through the National Research Development Corporation, the government has ordered plans for a prototype vessel. Today, jet-engined aircraft are used universally. And yet, but for a young Englishman, now Air Commodore Sir Frank Whittle, this British invention would not have revolutionized air travel. As a teenager in the RAF at Cranwell, he was already working on his ideas for a jet engine, which he patented at the age of 23. When an articulator lorry gets into a skid, it jackknifes, and the resulting accident can be a killer. An ex-transport operator at Datchet is today producing a new device to prevent such accidents. 42 years old Fred Hope, inventor and now manufacturer of this device, hawked his idea around British manufacturers for three years and got nowhere. He sunk all his capital into the project. And then, almost ready to give up in despair, he was invited to America by the president of the Truck Drivers Union to demonstrate the device. Success came almost overnight. Distribution is now set up throughout the world. In America, the Truck Drivers Union is pressing for compulsory fitting of the device to all articulated lorries. With an estimated three to 4,000 jackknifing accidents on British roads every year, the device is under official scrutiny in Britain once more. Patient Mr. Hope shows his fellow countrymen again how an articulator need not jackknife. New ideas have little chance of success unless they satisfy a need. The parking problem is almost universal. This device, which swings the rear of a car into a confined space, might help to solve it.
The device is fitted permanently to the underside of the car, and then, as the driver operates it, rollers engage with the rear tires and also lift the rear wheels off the ground. The car's rear wheels now drive the rollers, which swing the back of the car in either direction by using a head or reverse gear. Ingenious? Yes. Useful? Yes. But it's taken 10 years to raise enough money in Britain to manufacture the device. From overseas, Japan in particular, have come scores of interested inquiries. Spades, forks and other simple hand tools have changed little in shape since the Stone Age. But at a North London school, metalwork master Arthur England shows boys how to save 20% effort by using his new shaped tools. Awarded a silver medal for the invention at a recent Brussels exhibition, Mr. England, despite his name, has found no enthusiasm for his idea among British manufacturers. At Seven Oaks School in Kent, it's the boys who dream up the bright ideas. Under its director, Mr. Somerhoff, the school's technical activity centre, the first in Britain, was opened in 1963. With the increasing pressures of school examinations, the centre was designed to give boys a chance to develop creative technical and scientific interests in their spare time. A chance for the dreamer to put his dreams into practice. Sixteen-year-old Peter Hirsch spends all his spare time working on this automatic electric lift, which he designed, built and is now completing. Fourteen-years-old Jeffrey Smith experiments with a radio-controlled steam engine. It's at an early age, between 12 to 20, that ideas come easily, says Mr. Somerhoff. But this is the time when most children are so occupied with routine education that they get little chance to develop their own ideas. This contraption is based on the principle of the reflection of sound waves, which enables obstacles to be avoided. This is how the bat finds its way about. The same idea is used in new sonic devices to guide the blind. But inventions, however ingenious, need money to exploit them. Who knows how long it would have taken to develop radar had it not been for the urgency of war, which also speeded up the progress of the jet engine. The inventions of peacetime are just as vital.